Hey there, Gen Cities. Welcome to the Retro Lounge, where we bring to you the freshest voices and faces of today, all wrapped up in a nostalgic vibe. I'm your scout trooper, Nicole, and I'm very excited to dive into some awesome conversations with talented people from all over the world. Today, we have a super special guest. He's an incredible actor who's making waves in the industry, and he's been known for his charismatic personality and captivating performances. He's also the biggest winner in the latest Star Awards 2024, clinching all three awards that he was nominated for. He's got the most hated villain, most popular rising star, and best supporting actor. Welcoming the one and only Zhang Zetong. Thanks for having me. Wow. It's always a pleasure to have you on the Retro Lounge. Pleasure's mine. How's your day been? Good. Uh, today has been uh, one of the few rare off days that I get, and it's good to be here. Uh, I've just done amazing shoot with talented people from Gen Z magazine, so it's nice. And uh, I haven't done a magazine shoot in a while, actually. Awesome. I'm glad to give you the experience and make you work on your off day. Uh, yes, mine. <laughs> So let's dive right into it. Mm. I think you have quite an interesting career. You have transitioned from being a customer relationship manager yes. to a celebrated actor. Was there any like challenges during this change? I think the challenges are just so many. Um, I think transitioning from 9 to 5 to a more of, um, I would say, irregular work schedule has been quite a big challenge for me. Because in the past, um, when you're working 9 to 5 desk bound you have very predictable rest time right Right. whereas over here in the new job in my new job as an actor slash content creator uh, you don't really get that much of a fixed rest time so it's pretty hard to allocate time for rest or like to just to meet up with friends or to hang out with my spend time with family and stuff so this is one of the biggest challenges that I've been even up to now right so it's like the lack of schedule so you really to carve out me time for you, right? Yes, yes. I and think. it's irregular. You, you, we hardly, I can only see my schedule for like two weeks in advance. And beyond that, I'm sorry. You have a, I have a couple of friends' weddings that came up and I oh, had to say no. no to them. No, unfortunately, really, I had to because like, I just cannot promise that I'll be there. And I don't want to you know, reserve a seat just for something that I might reject later on. So, so I can imagine this journey, this very unpredictable journey, as you said. There's got to be a lot of ups, downs. I was just wondering, is there any point where you sort of thought, maybe I shouldn't have left my job at Carousel? Okay, so generally, I try, I try to be a guy that live, live with no regrets. Is that too cliche, too passe? I think we're all just walking cliche. <laughs> That's true. So I, th- I think in a way, I want to say that once I spend enough time to make a decision, then don't look back. So always look forward with the decision that I made, which is, since I want to make the transition into the entertainment industry, okay, you know what? Just look forward. That's what I thought to myself. Were there times when I wished that I could be back? Uh, there are times that I felt very, very down and I would say it could just be the lowest point uh, for me as an actor that I feel that maybe I'm not cut off for this job. All right. So I wouldn't say that I miss going back to the, to the previous job, but more like, ah, maybe I'm not suitable to be an actor. Oh, that must have been tough to feel that way. Yeah, yeah. It, it was, um, it wasn't easy. I think getting into this industry uh, with the with, with the title that, you know, I won the competition, mm. uh, it was a big glory, right? And and the good thing that comes with it is that the company gives you a lot of opportunities. I think what these opportunities do, uh, as good as they are, they also expose all the learning mistakes, right? You, right. you grow as an actor, you grow as a performer, you make a lot of mistakes, but these mistakes will be magnified because you receive so many opportunities, you get so much exposure. People will be looking at you, you know, making mistakes, and then they'll be like, okay, I think maybe this guy can do it. So so when you get a lot of um, all these like naysayers or like people from the industry telling you that, hey, uh, you're not so good, you start to doubt yourself as well. You start to think like, okay, am I really cut out for this? But I mean, thankfully, along the way, um, aside from the naysayers that I met, uh, there are also a whole bunch of very encouraging, very supportive people. My manager being one of them. Thank you, Shilling. Oh, <laughs> there, 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 right there. <laughs> yeah, uh, um, and and I'm so glad that at that point of time, I think they, they had faith in me and they really, I don't know what they saw in me or I don't know what was going through in their minds. They, they really told me um, wholeheartedly and genuinely that I could do it. I could do it. Maybe a lot of actors go through this same rite of passage, but when I walked through it, come out of it from the other side, I thought that, wow, it was, it was tough. 
I think it's awesome that you have so many supporters and clearly you have proved all the naysayers wrong. Congratulations again. Thank you. I heard that you mentioned your mother a few times as well of your supporters. Yes. Has your mother ever, you feel like your mother influenced like the roles that you pick or even the way you approach acting? Generally, no, she doesn't really influence um, my performance, but she has been a source of um, source of motivation to do well. Because uh, I think in my core, I like to make my parents proud. I think we all do. Yeah, yeah. Ex- exactly. I feel that every children, every, every kid feel the same way. And, and I feel that uh, as long as I can make them proud, I feel that I'm doing the right thing. Mm. So they are like a source of, I would say, inspiration or motivation to do well uh, in acting because uh, my mom is the biggest supporter I ever have. She watches every single thing I'm on, every single episode of drama, every single episode of uh, a podcast, variety shows that I'm on. So, hi, mommy. Yeah, say hi to my mom. <laughs> She's probably watching this now. She might not understand whatever I'm saying, but I'm sure I'll explain to her after this. <laughs> Yeah. Awesome. So on the note of family, do you have any like special childhood memories with your family that resonates with you or that propels you when you're in your acting career? I think with my childhood, uh, there's a good mix of um, happy and unhappy memories. Uh, unhappy, you know, nothing too, too bad, but it's more like, you know, as kids, you know, um, growing up in a very Asian parenting uh, family background, right. I do get my fair share of beatings. <laughs> oh so, so I come from a very, I would say, uh, street parenting um, um, background. Mm. So, so that really helped to, you know, establish that when doing certain things, when it comes to certain things, I do need to be disciplined with myself, especially uh, how I prepare for my role or all all the matters that comes that comes with. Uh, preparing and memorizing and scripts and stuff. So all these like help to turn me into a disciplined person per se. Happy memories, actually a lot of them uh, do help because uh, in the process of creating a, a new character, you actually do have to also instill the childhood memories. Right. And a lot of it, I would say I borrow or I imagine it to be similar to my own childhood as well. So without all these, you know, mix of happy and and unhappy memories of childhood, it wouldn't help me create a, a very full character mm. on screen. It's funny you should mention that because I've heard some actors when they need to cry, they will think of like a very personal sad moment. Yes. Not to cry, but do you have yeah. any of that personal sad moments you use? Okay, uh, I can let you in with some of the secrets of how some of the actors cry uh, locally, right? Um, this is uh, the, the, my, co-actor, my co-stars and my colleagues per se. Uh, generally, yes, they do borrow some of their personal emotions. Uh, they can imagine things. For instance, you ha- if you have a dog that's with been with you for uh, ten years. No, I do have a dog that's been with me. For okay, like 10 so imagine years. that you know. Okay, that's one way. And then next is like definitely your parents. If you really love them or you have a very good relationship with them, you're imagining your parents not being able to be with you anymore. I feel the simplest one is that I feel that the easiest trigger for me is that uh, when people tell me that hey, you know when you grow old. We can do the AI filters to see how we grow, how we're gonna look like when we're older. Then you realize that hey, your parents will never see you when you're old. Oh, you just planted it yeah. all in my head. I've correct. never thought about that. Yeah, correct. So, so when you think of it that way, it's very easy for the emotions to come. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I see. But, that's a trade secret. Right? Yeah, that's 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 a that's a secret. But but um um to, to progress on from there because we can't be always be using our own uh, emotions and memories. Uh, this will actually uh, hurt us mentally will hurt our mental health. So for what we do is that we try to stay within character and we'll only create um, and think about things that has happened to this character instead of um, always resorting to, to your own memories and emotions. Because if healthy, you, yeah? It's healthy. Because if you were to do that like seven times a day... Emotionally manipulating yourself. Yeah, that's that's not very healthy to be honest. Yeah, yeah so speaking about characters and roles, has there been any that you've always wanted to try or maybe a specific genre but you just never had a chance? Very luckily, last year, for the character that I won the award with, that was the character that I wanted to play. Um, so like a villain? Like a, like a very, uh, like a, almost a sociopathic villain. So that's something that I've been always wanting to try. And I got my hands off it, I was so, I was so thrilled. Um, the only pity is that I didn't get to do as many murders as I wanted to, but maybe next time we'll do a... Maybe next time. Yeah. Maybe next time, guys. Cold Blood the Murderer. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So, I know Christopher Lee has been your mentor since start. So yes. Was there any particular advice or moment that you could share that really helped you or you can still remember to this day? I think with Christopher Lee, uh, Ming Shuo Lao Shi, he keeps me grounded. All I can say is that 
ever since the start of the competition, him, like my father, has always been very strict with me, mm. uh, with my performance. And the funny thing is that recently, uh, after the award, I actually um, met up with him for a breakfast. And you know, I just, with the same mindset, went, went to him and said, Hey, are you proud? They say, yeah, very proud of you. Aww. And and then, being the Ming Lao Shi he is, he went out to give me a three-hour lecture of how I can be better. <laughs> he basically pointed out every single thing that I've done right, not right, or like in the in the show, and everything, and told me that okay, you could do a lot better in this the next show. I'm or three proud hours. of you, but then yes, I'm proud of you, but here's like a list of things you can do. Okay, so I guess he's truly living up to his teacher, Kevin yes. Mentoro. Yes, yes. Besides him, is there anyone else in the industry that you look up to or you feel is your role model? Uh, right now, uh, I took a few classes with uh, Yan Yan Lao Shi. So she's also a very prominent um, actress in our industry. So she's also someone that I look up to a lot as well. Hopefully one day I'll get to act alongside her as well. That would be cool. Yeah. Okay, so just humor me and let's just transport to an alternate universe. If okay. you were not an actor okay. and you're also not working for Carousel, yes. what will you be doing? I might be working for Sam Altman. Do you got to help me out with that? Okay, so he is the creator of uh, OpenAI. No, OpenAI? Yes, OpenAI, ChatGPT. Wow. Uh, ChatGPT. Okay. I was looking at their updates recently. Sorry, I'm a tech geek. Yeah. So, because I come from the tech industry. That makes sense. So, even as of today, I still pay attention to all the uh, latest developments and updates to the technology industry. So, I'm very passionate about startups. So, if I do get a chance, maybe I will go work for him um, in the US. Oh, Hopefully, he'll hire me. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so unfortunately, we have to give up on the tech dreams for now. Back to the acting yes. world. <laughs> Looking ahead, is there any long term goals for you or anything you are like shooting for right now? Right now, I'm very focused with uh, my current role. Uh, that's the the male lead in the second season of Little Nyonya, Emerald Hill. Uh, so that's something I'm really quite excited about. I only just got started, so that we have about four more months of filming left. So I'm quite curious to see what's in store for me. Um, while playing this character because there'll be a lot of new things that we discover along the way. So that's something that I'm really looking forward to right now. Beyond that, I do hope, this is just throwing out into the universe, okay? I do hope that I'll get to partake or participate in uh, a movie. Oh, that sounds fun. Yep, yeah, there'll be. Any particular genre of movie that you're looking at? See, any movie is really like, you know, a bonus. But if there's a really one genre that I like to go, maybe uh, something more indie. Oh. Uh, something either that touches upon like societal topics or family topics. Why oh, are you speaking my language? I love oh. like slow burn indie film. Yes, yes, yeah, yes, yeah, yes, yeah. yes, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. I love that too. Hold a shot for too long and it yes. doesn't it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, because that would be really, um, I would say, a very different thing that I can try mm. apart from my uh, usual day to day dramas. Oh, I'm excited for you. I'll put that onto the universe for you as well. Oh, into the universe. Universe here. <laughs> So the entertainment industry is always changing. Yes. I'm just wondering, do you, do you know what to expect ahead and what, how are you keeping up with the changes nowadays? Honestly, I'm not sure if I'm keeping up with the changes, <laughs> to be <laughs> honest. Okay, first we have, you know, Facebook. That was the grandfather's thing now. Instagram, also becoming, slowly becoming a grandfather's, yeah. grandfather's thing. TikTok, slowly ditching, you know, Gen Z is slowly ditching it. So I'm not sure what's next. To be honest, I'm really... Rulers, I think I'm not sure if I'm keeping up with all the trends. Um, but right now, all I'm focusing on right now is hopefully we create content that stay true to who I am as a person. Mm-hmm. So my character or my personality, no matter which platform comes up, will remain the same or will, will remain relevant, hopefully, uh, and will remain entertaining to the, to the audiences. That sounds good, yeah. yeah. Stay true to yourself just one step at a time. Yep. Back to the world of hypotheticals. Mm. Is there a role that came across you that you turned down or... You just regretted not taking it up or an opportunity that passed you by? Um, well, I'm not sure if I can say this. <laughs> Oops, I'm not in trouble then. Uh, uh, there is a role that uh, I was quite interested in and at the same time very afraid to try. Uh, it is to reprise the founding father of Singapore. Wow. Okay, I, will not, I will not say, you know, I will not say more, but I mean, this is quite clear on its own. Mm-hmm. But uh, I think reprising a historical figure that is so well known. To me, it's terrifying as an actor. I'm like, where do you begin? How do you start? How is the audience gonna take you? And and you know, and how are they gonna react when they see you portraying some someone that they know so dearly? Right. So I feel that this is something that is, uh, really outside the comfort zone. And if I can nail it, 
that will be like wow, amazing. Yeah, that's something that I've been wanting to try as well. I mean, now when I see you, all I can think about is founding father. So no, no, no. <laughs> well, no. <laughs> to round it all off, I'm sure we have all seen or I've seen the very moving, your very moving um, awards ceremony acceptance speech. <laughs> No, it was great. It was great. I felt all your emotions coming through. Thank you. Six, so six, that was embarrassing, but yeah. No, no, it was great. I'm sure all of us were very moved. So I just want to give you a chance if you had to redo your Star Awards speech right now. Wow. Be more chill. We're all just sitting down. We're all just chilling. What would you like to say? Um, okay. Wow. Have your moment. Have your moment. This is, uh, I was freaking. First of all, I, I shouldn't have flung my trophy uh, uh, too much. I think that day I was a bit too emotional, so I kept like doing this and this and this and this. <laughs> I'll hold it tight dearly to me, like a baby. And uh, I'd like to thank... Oh, this is... A throwing in a hot seat. My mind is drawing blank. You can, can do it think? in Chinese if you like. No, no, it's fine. I think English is fine. I think for, for the audience of uh, Retro Lounge. <laughs> no, 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 no more tears, no more tears, no more tears. Uh, first of all, I think that this is unbelievable. Uh, there is no way, if you ask me five years ago, that I'll be here with this award today. I'm doing this very seriously. Yeah? I am also listening very seriously. Yeah, uh, and uh, I'd like to thank, you know, um, everyone who's trusted me in this role. Thank you, my EP. Thank you, the directors who's given me a very big creative space to work on. And also, everyone who's involved in the project, All That Glitters. Uh, also, on a serious note, All That Glitters is coming out on Netflix. June 1st, 2024. So be sure to catch it and you can find the reasons why this show is so widely acclaimed at Star Wars 2024. Awesome. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> yes. Thank you so much. It's really interesting to wow. your journey and yes. thanks for sharing your story with us. Thank you. Congrats again on the fantastic wins at the Star Wars. And to our amazing audience, thank you for tuning in to another episode of The Retro Lounge. We hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. Don't forget to follow us on social media and subscribe for more amazing content like this. Stay fabulous, stay curious and keep rocking your retro vibe. I'm your Jen Trooper, Nicole signing out from The Retro Lounge. Take care everyone. Bye. Bye. <laughs>